Hi guys, welcome to Twin Perspective. I'm Joe. And today I'm going to be giving you my favorite songs by Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel is one of my all-time favorite artists. And this video is breaking down my favorite 25 songs, top 25, from Peter Gabriel. Now, Gabriel was the lead singer of Genesis. That's how he started in the late 60s. The last album he did with Genesis was in 1974. I think he officially left the band in 75. Uh, he was having family problems. Genesis was ready to get up and go and do everything all the time. And Gabriel had to take a break and step away from it. So a couple of years later, Gabriel started his solo career. He released uh, four albums that were self-titled. The first one in 1977, we're going to call that one Car. He released his second solo album in 1978, we'll call that one Scratch. And then in 1980, his third solo album, he really came together with the members he was playing with. Uh, Tony Levin has a, has been his uh, bass player his whole career from King Crimson uh, he started his uh, solo albums his solo career with Robert Fripp as the guitar player also from King Crimson and I think those guys really had something going in 1980 with Gabriel's third album uh, we'll call that one Face uh, the two previous albums, Car and Scratch, uh, you know, late 70s, not so far removed from Genesis. A lot of 70s progressive rock influence in a lot of those songs. Um, I felt like there were a few tracks that were pretty good. I really just felt like Gabriel was finding his way through those first two albums. And in 1980 with Face, he really, really brought it all together found his way I think as a songwriter and like I said with the musicians he was working with and um, Face was one of the best albums he ever did two years later he released his fourth solo album self-titled solo album in 1982 that one we'll call Security once again a great solo artist writing great songs you know, these last two albums I've mentioned, Face and Security, got away from the, the 70s prog rock rock stuff. And I, like I said, really found his way as a musician and how he was going to write songs. But it all came together in 1986 when he joined forces with Daniel Anwar as a producer. Now he, had, he had started using David Rhodes as a guitar player as well. And uh, 1986 with So, that was the biggest album uh, of his career. Chart toppers, left and right, Grammy winning. Um, he became one of the best artists out there with that release. And um, I do have a lot of songs from that album on my top 25. But I think his next, his fifth solo release... In 1992, Us, which was also produced by Daniel Anwar. I think that was Gabriel's best album as a solo artist. And Us is highly represented in my top 25. Um, eventually, 10 years later, he did another solo album. I'll, I'll say his, his uh, seventh solo album. It was called Up. It was pretty good as well. I think Gabriel produced that one on his own. Um, I like Daniel Lanois production so uh, for me up up was a bit of a disappointment compared to so and us but so and us are two of the best albums ever made so in my opinion so it's kind of hard to live up to that anyway Gabriel had a lot of albums after that that involved uh, collaborations big blue ball he also uh, did revisited some old songs with an orchestra New Blood, 
but I think Gabriel's work as a, a composer of soundtracks um, has a lot of great stuff by him. Three soundtracks in particular that I want to mention. In 1985, he did the soundtrack for Birdie. Those were a lot of his old tracks that he just remixed and uh, just presented in a different way. And uh, it came out pretty good. Nothing from that album on my top 25. In 1989, he did the soundtrack to The Last Temptation of Christ. This album is called Passion. And this is my favorite album of all time. I like to say that Us is Gabriel's best solo album. This is Gabriel's best album. It's a soundtrack, but this is his best album in my opinion. Passion. Represented on my list as well. And I'll also mention 2002's Long Walk Home. That was a soundtrack to Rabbit Proof Fence. That is a beautiful soundtrack. Every song is great. And, uh... I have a love affair with that album on a personal level, which involves Twin Peaks and some original stuff I did, fan fiction I done I did myself for Twin Peaks, and I use a lot of those tracks from Rabbit Proof Fence for it. When I hear those songs, I think about my Twin Peaks creation more than I do the movie Rabbit Proof Fence. Uh, anyway, none of those songs are represented on my list. So here I go, the top 25 songs by Peter Gabriel, the way I see it. All right, at number 25, Bread and Wine from Passion, 1989. Bread and Wine is the last song. It's kind of a, you know, a lot of the themes in the album Passion are traditional themes. I find myself singing religious songs to some of these. This one, uh, notwithstanding, His Truth is Marching Home. It's a beautiful song. I love it. It's very, uh, it's an instrumental. It's very slow. And uh, I think it's a great representation of Gabriel and where Gabriel is at his best, where he has these long, uh, drawn out keyboards, notes, one single notes, chords filling up, and then bringing in voices and a lot of uh, Northern African or Middle Eastern uh, instruments. Um, that's where Gabriel's voice can shine when he does stuff like that. He's got better efforts, though, uh, further up on my list. At number 24, from 1980, Face. The big hit, Games Without Frontiers, featuring Kate Bush on backing vocals. Games Without Frontier was a, a single and a, and a decent hit for Gabriel. Um, it's a favorite of mine because it's very catchy and it's also, it talks about war, it talks about how we're brought up, uh, we're brought up to believe that in this war mentality, the winner take all. And um, I think what the song is saying is um, in the evolution of, of man, um, we remain children playing these games with war that, uh, you know, there can be no winners. At number 23, from the album Us, 1992, the opening track, Come Talk to Me. I was always under the impression he wrote this about one of his daughters, asking her to come and talk to him, break down the barrier. Uh, it's a good song. It's a really good song, and, and it's grown on me. I think Come Talk to Me is one of those staples for Gabriel. It's probably on a lot of people's lists. 
Um, I like it more and more. Um, it's a fine song. Manu Kache playing the drums on that album. He's a great drummer. Um, and that is the opening track for us. At number 22, I have We Do What We're Told. Milgram's 37. That is from 1986. So, We Do What We're Told is very weird, very strange. It's another one of those aerial kind of soundscape background keyboards with the the voices just screaming out beautiful melodies <laughs> Gabriel has this great way of screaming and singing along he may be speaking in another language he may be speaking in tongues for all I know but it's all very uh, melodic and rhythmic we do what we told has a really weird keyboard sound in it. I'm not sure if it's a different instrument or just a, a synthesizer, but Gabriel has this uh, way of doing these rhythms in the back with keyboards that uh, are very unique. And that's a good one. Not a lot of people like that one or talk about that one. We do what we're told at number 21. 14 black paintings from 1992's Us. Another one that is a soundscape, Middle Eastern, Northern African sounding instruments. Uh, Gabriel's vocal performance in 14 black paintings is, is pretty good. I think it's one of his standouts. Not very many words, but he sure does belt them out. <laughs> At number 20, also from Us, 1992, is Kiss That Frog. Kiss That Frog is one of those, I'm intentionally trying to be pop, and it works. Uh, there is a, when, they, when Gabriel plays this song live, he keeps a certain beat that remains throughout the song, but when you listen to the album, that beat doesn't come until towards the end of the song. The beginning of the song, the drums are focusing on, on other beats. And if you can find that second half beat while you're listening to the first half of Kiss That Frog, if you can find it, it's not there on the album. You have to figure it out yourself. Man, that just elevates that song, makes that song so much better. <laughs> It's just something fun I like to do when I listen to that song. Check it out. Listen to it. It's great. They also developed the song, another version of it, uh, for a, a virtual game. It was like a ride. You climbed in it, and then the video played while the thing moved you around and stuff. <laughs> uh, it was featured in malls and stuff. I never got to see it. The closest it came to me was about an hour away, and... I wasn't driving an hour to ride a ride for five minutes, so. But Kiss That Frog, very special song for me. That's at number 20. At number 19, also from Us, 1992, Love to Be Loved. This is the second track on the album. It's a beautiful song. This is a. Uh, this is where, you know, Gabriel is writing songs now that, that not very many people can even aspire to write, to write music this way. And he can do it just so simply, you know, and having a, you know, a great drummer like Manu and bass player like Levin and a guitar player like Rhodes. Um, you can craft these songs. You know, there's some similarity to the way he crafted songs. The, beginning of his solo career um, I just think it all works better especially with Lanois production Love to be Love has a, a, a great break toward the end where everything drops out and he just brings in the swelling keyboards and then screams his way back into the track good stuff love it at number 18 from So 1986 
a song that Gabriel wrote with uh, Lori Anderson. This is the picture. And Lori Anderson would call it Excellent Birds. This is the picture. It doesn't get a lot of love, but the bass work by Tony Levin in that song is amazing. The second half of the song, Tony really just just goes off, just puts in these little notes and hints, and it's amazing work by a bass player. It's it's some of the best bass work I've ever heard in a song. As simple as it is, he just he's just be listen to it, and he's just doing some special stuff there. Um, a great song, well written by Gabriel. That's another one where. He can write stuff like that with these brilliant artists like Laurie Anderson, who, you know, artists in the true sense of the word. Um, at number 17 from the album Passion, 1989, a song called Open. This is another one of those aerial landscape in the back. Very soft hints of notes coming in and out, um, and just gorgeous singing. Really, just a hey, stuff like that. Shankar is featured in this one, singing with him. Uh, brilliant. In the album Passion, he also featured uh, Nusrat Fatah Ali Khan. One of the best voices out of the Middle East you'll ever hear. Open is a beautiful song, and if you ever get a chance, if you're not familiar with Passion, put on Open and realize, you know, that the soft, beautiful, simple, and just powerful as all hell. At number 16 from the album Us, 1992, I'm going with Digging in the Dirt. Digging in the dirt is about therapy. We could all use some therapy. It's also about marriage counseling. And we could all use some of that too. If you've ever been in, a, in a, any relationship, you know what that's about. Digging in the dirt. You got you to gotta figure out your own stuff before you can really figure out anybody else. <laughs> You set these uh, limits on where the relationship will go. And uh, if you're having issues, take a look inside. You'll figure it out. <laughs> At number 15, also from Us, 1992, the, uh, the, the song Only Us. Only Us is one of those great songs, very strange rhythm. Excellent bass work again. Um, Gabriel's a brilliant songwriter to be able to put together something like this. Only Us is one of those. I think this is one of the most unique things he's ever done. Very rhythmic. And, uh, oh, he's so rhythmic in everything he does. But Only Us is, is strange. Um, high on my list because I think it's a great accomplishment. At number 14... From his first solo album, 1977, Car. I'm going with Salisbury Hill, the first single, big single he had. Put him on the map as a solo artist. He still plays that song to this day. The great song about a place he lived growing up in a valley somewhere and Salisbury Hill has strong lyrics. It's a very simple song. Nice rhythm. The ending doesn't really go as far as he can go in songs. Um, but I think the strength of the lyrics is what carries Salisbury Hill for me. Salisbury Hill would probably be in a lot of people's top five. But it is on my list on the strength of those lyrics at number 14. At number 15, from 1980, Face, 
Family snapshot. Family snapshot, in my opinion, is a progressive song that's actually structured very well and presented very well, that Gabriel did. A lot of different parts. The ending is uh, might be my favorite part of the song. So gorgeous, so yearning and uh, painful and powerful. Good stuff. Family snapshot, different parts, and and like I said, it's it's removed from progressive rock, but it's it's still structured that way. And I think Gabriel did a, a fine job with Family Snapshot, um, one of his classics from his first four albums that I really really like. At number twelve from the album Passion, nineteen eighty nine, with this love. With This Love. Now, With This Love appears twice on Passion. Uh, he does one version with different instruments, Middle Eastern, Northern African instruments. He does another version with a boys choir. Both of them are very powerful. I can't tell you which one's my favorite, so I'll just say With This Love, and you can pick whichever one's your favorite and listen to it. <laughs> um very unique song, very powerful, beautiful chords, great melody. Um, not a lot of people can pull off that. It's a great, great song. Um, an accomplishment. I think an accomplishment that any musician would be proud of. At number 11, also from Passion, 1989, the song is called It Is Accomplished. It is accomplished. Uh, it also hints back to the same traditional song as Bread and Wine. It, it is accomplished and Bread and Wine, I think, are the last two songs on the album. And they, they both kind of hint toward that. His truth is marching home. Mm -hmm. Oh, great stuff. So, like I said, if you love Peter Gabriel and you're not uh, hip to his soundtracks, then uh, check out the ones I'm mentioning from Passion. Those are singular tracks off those off that album that uh, I think are some of Gabriel's greatest accomplishments. Um, it is accomplished. When he did Passion, he created the greatest album I've ever heard. So, uh, it is accomplished. <laughs> All right, we're getting to the top 10. My favorite 10 Peter Gabriel songs. At number 10, a song that's probably in everybody's top 10 from 1986. So, Don't Give Up, featuring Kate Bush. Peter Gabriel did a lot of songs in his career, his solo career, which, uh, uh, kind of harken back to uh, um, I would say uh, gospel in a way there's this hint of uh, of blues um, he went there quite a bit and it worked on occasion uh, with don't give up you know got to work on appeal you know that's that kind of gospel he did that a lot in some of his songs um almost took me out of don't give up but the more i hear it the, the, the more powerful it gets and the um really tony levin's melodic bass line throughout the song you know is the staple of the song and and of course kate kate bush who you know her singing is gorgeous and don't give up. That's my number 10. At number 9 from Security, 1982, San Jacinto. Very, very good song. Beautiful song. Not a lot going on there with the drums or anything like that. Um, powerful chords. Powerful lyric. Uh, he manages to hit moments in that song that are just brilliant that are just all powerful um 
that's an absorbing song great song you know he had a lot of a lot of uh, singles I want to say from those first four albums this one wasn't as successful as the rest but San Jacinto beautiful song great at number eight from the album us 1992 washing of the water now you want to talk about gospel this is it this is the epitome of it and I think you did a great a great job with this song vocally he uh, he limits himself at points and I think uh, it fits the song very well um, he only picks a couple of moments where he really belts the notes out and you know he can do it but uh, it is gospel to me it's very uh, I think it's a all-around kind of song I think it's the kind of song that a country artist could do or that a blues artist could do or R&B artist could do so uh, washing of the water number eight one of my favorites at number seven speaking of a uh, religious washing of with the water <laughs> at number seven from car 1977 here comes the flood now the version on car is a uh, very good very awesome very powerful in your face lots of instruments doing lots of things he stripped that song down later on in his career and did a, a version of it with just him on the piano and I think I actually like that one better but as a song it is written very well the chord progression is gorgeous here comes the flood one of the best songs ever written absolutely love it and it still holds true to this day at number six surprisingly from up 2002 the song I grieve I grieve was featured in a movie oh, I can't remember the name of the movie now with Meg Ryan and Nicolas Cage anyway uh, it'll probably be right there um, that version and the version from up are pretty similar I'm not sure if Lanois may have produced one version I would love to hear Lanois produce that song I think it would be better but other than that I grieve is just a beautiful thing if you ever get in that moment in your life where the lyrics to this song can bear meaning to you then this song will hit you and hit you hard it is like a knife in the heart it's gorgeous it gets to that little faster pace part toward the end before it gets back to the soft part and uh you know at that at that point the 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 pain has swollen up so much that 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 quicker uh break it's like a release it's like from depression to almost this drive I don't want to say anger but it's a it's a drive to refocus yourself you know to get out of that rut and then the song ends where you know you realize the pain is gonna stay with you ah such a good song all right let's get to the top five at number five from us 1992 the last song on the album secret world secret world is brilliant the way Lanois produced it is absolutely phenomenal and when Gabriel does this song live it might be better he, he brings all of the different parts in at one time and 
for every time those progressions come up, you know, they keep the full band going and the, the, the strong drumming going the whole time. And um, it works so well as a live song. It makes you want to get up and dance. It's a great live song. But I'm going to tip my hat to Daniel Lanois because even though, I don't know, you know, some people might might feel like the album is missing a lot of those parts because Lanois brings them up, he'll tease you with it and then pull it back. And when you hear it live, you, you kind of miss all those parts going on at the same time. But Lanois crafted it so well. It's just, it's just, it, it works as, as the album version works for me too. Um, Secret World, number five. At number four, my favorite song from my favorite album, Passion, 1989. The song is A Different Drum. I think A Different Drum is a phenomenal accomplishment by a musician. I think even though it's, it's basically an instrumental, it's uh it reaches this point of power that a lot of songs just can't with a basic chorus great drums through the whole thing unbelievable vocals uh powerful production he did a great job gabriel did a great job producing that song the guitars are strong a lot of different instruments going on in there in the back <laughs> passion is one of the great things about passion is reading the credits of all the musicians and uh, not only blown away by by the musicians the the number of musicians it's the instruments that are being used in it stuff that i've never heard of before and you know uh stuff that you know you could you could probably accomplish with a drum machine but uh but instead he took the time to, <laughs> to fill his studio with all of these different musicians playing finger cymbals and oh, all kind of neat stuff a different drum if you listen to any song from passion put on a different drum and you realize you know that song is better than i think anything he did in his first four albums I think a different drum would be the best song on, on any of those albums. So check it out if you haven't already. At number three, probably his most successful song. No, not Sledgehammer. That is his most successful song. I'm talking about the cult classic from So 1986, In Your Eyes. I believe he wrote the song about his wife at the time. He got a divorce shortly after, or shortly before. Gabriel's always had some love interests in and out. Um, bless his heart. In Your Eyes strikes a chord with a lot of people. Of course, uh, featured on Say Anything with John Kuzak holding the jam box up. Everyone remembers that. Gabriel's actually done a few shows where John Kuzak was there and Kuzak handed him the big boom box right, right when he's, well, I guess, before he plays a song or during the song. I've never seen it happen during his shows. I just heard about it. In Your Eyes is a great song. Can't deny it. It's one of the best songs ever written. Um, he was at the uh, pinnacle of his, his uh, success. And that song was part of it. Cult classic. Great song. But it's not my number one. At number two. From So. 1986. My favorite song from that album. Mercy Street. Um, Mercy Street's one of the best songs ever written. It's an accomplishment few musicians will never be able to do. Even if they strive to pull something off like that, it, it won't come out quite like that. Um, when I was young, when that album came out, I was probably 15 years old. 
and uh, the song Mercy Street really introduced me to what music could be. Gabriel had stretched music to a part, a part that a point there where I thought, wow, I couldn't figure out what he was doing. I can't figure out if the beginning is different instruments or if it's just a keyboard part, little whistles going on and ting, 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 and just just opened my mind up, my imagination, the way he sings it with a, a deeper register going on through the whole time, that insane harmony for the chorus, which is just just strange and and beautiful. And if you ever get to see him tour for his tour for up, his band pulls off Mercy Street with his daughter there singing as well, and uh, and they nail those harmonies. It's just a it's a beautiful thing, to, beautiful thing to see. Oh, Mercy Street, I can go on and on for days about that song. Um, it, how could anything else possibly top that? But my favorite song by Peter Gabriel of all time at number one from Us 1992 Blood of Eden. Blood of Eden's powerful song, beautiful song. The epitome of Gabriel to have the rhythmic drums bass made the bass is just beautiful he's dragging the like two two strings or a chord or something just gorgeous and hints of different instruments and keyboards coming in and out but uh Sinead O'Connor singing with him um powerful if you've ever had a, a like I say a relationship with someone and and you're struggling. This song right here will will put it all in the focus for you. Um, according to the Bible, uh, a piece of rib was taken from Adam to create Eve. And as Gabriel says, we've been trying to get back together ever since. The Blood of Eden, my favorite song by Peter Gabriel. It is also my fourth favorite song of all time by anybody. Um, as a matter of fact, you can't go wrong with Gabriel, especially this top 10. So there you go. That's my favorite 25 songs by Peter Gabriel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope if you're a Gabriel fan, you like these tracks as well. If I have ranked some of them poorly, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments below. Um, missing from the list are Sledgehammer and Big Time and Steam and Shock the Monkey. A lot of big hits by Gabriel missing from this list. Um, I'm a fan of his music, though. And if any of these tracks you're not that familiar with, go ahead and check them out. Being uh, that Genesis is my all-time favorite band, I think that my opinion of Gabriel has validity as well. So there you go. This has been Twin Perspective. I am Joe. Please subscribe to Rosenfield 10. Click on Playlist when you're at the homepage, and you can find what you want with ease. We cover movies, music, TV, we also cover news and politics, and I have everything broken down in the playlist perfectly for you. You can find it with ease. These top lists will be in the folder of top 10 lists, even though I don't think I have a top 10 in that top 10 list folder. <laughs> Most of them are top 25. This has been my favorite 25 songs by Peter Gabriel, and I will see you guys later. Bye.